Over the years, Adobe has, has introduced some amazing tools for removing distractions. Uh, I'm able to remove distractions today in photos that, that honestly, two years ago, I wouldn't have even attempted. And not only that, I'm able to do it very, very quickly. So between the remove tool and between generative fill, which I, I use generative fill way more for removing something from a photo than I ever do for actually generating some random object and adding it to the photo. But uh, I use it as a distraction rule, removal tool. And those tools are great. They do pose a certain problem that you're gonna see in the beginning of, of my tutorial here for certain photos. And that that led me to use another tool to get the job done. And it's a tool that I still fall back on all the time, but it's a tool I don't hear a lot of people talking about anymore. And it's one of the ones that, that we all loved for years, we used all the time, and I still think it's 100% um, still very usable and very much needed today. So let's go ahead and jump in. Now, this photo is a, is, a, is a perfect example. I was editing this photo last week. It's what gave me the idea for the tutorial. And my, my original, my first thought was, is so there's, there's a little bit of backlight going on here. The sun, the sun is generally back here, okay? And when I shoot backlight, I'm trying to get a little bit of edge glow around the subject, which I got here, but I never want the sun or the sky in it. I want a, a dark of a background. So could I go in here and could I crop this photo uh, down and cut all that out? Absolutely, I could crop the photo and do that. Um, I'd get more of the look I was going for. Then I wouldn't have a tutorial to do. Um, and the, the other thing, to be perfectly honest with you, I usually crop my wildlife photos pretty tight. I like a little, I like this one a little bit looser and I actually like a little bit more of the environment in this photo. So, um, so that got me to, to think, well, I wanna remove this area up at the top. And what I did is I just went and selected it and then I used generative fill. And when I use generative fill to remove something, I generally leave the prompt blank and I'll show you what it gave me here. So it gave me this. And overall, I think that looks pretty good. I, I think, you know, does it look exactly like the background? Who knows? If you saw this photo later, I think nine people out of 10 would never, uh, would never ever think something was done to it. The, the only one person out of 10 would be a photographer that would, would complain about it. So most people would, would pass by this. Here's the problem. If we wanted to do something high resolution with this photo, take a look at what happens. And you're going to see this as we, and you really got to zoom in to see it. But take a look at what we, we get here. At the bottom, all right, down here is the original texture of the photo, all right? And this isn't noise to, to the, the degree that you'd ever get rid of it. To me, a photo should have a little bit of grain and texture and noise to it. So you don't want perfectly smooth photos that look like paintings. And we'd wanna keep this, okay? This isn't what you'd ever enough to get ever get rid of. The problem is, is look at above it, the area that we filled with generative fill. Generative fill is, is usually low resolution right now. And this isn't just in the Adobe world. Um, generative fill amongst all applications is fairly low resolution. So what we get is just a difference in, in that whole background there. Now, if I were just sharing this on say Instagram and that's the size we saw it, nobody would ever see it. So what you're doing with the photo matters. Remember, most people aren't printing their photo. Most people aren't doing something with their photo really, really large. If you're just sharing it to social media, it's gonna get compressed anyway. We can get away with a lot with generative fill. But if, you, if this photo is destined to do something bigger and better with, you saw what the problem is in that background and that's due to generative fill. And there are ways to try to make it fill high resolution. Um, you're mostly gonna not be successful in that. So here's, here's the other tool. The other tool is under the edit menu under content aware fill. And it's one of the tools we used to use all the time. And then the remove tool came along and then generate fill came along and we kind of stopped using it. And it's still a really good tool because it can fix large areas um, much faster than, than we really could any other way. So what I would do is I would, you could select the whole area and try to do it. I would approach it in smaller bits and pieces. I would, uh, I would go in here and try to Try to just, you know, I've, and I always did that with content aware fill, smaller areas and work my way up. So we go to the edit menu, we go down here to content aware fill. Uh, pretty easy window here, you get a little brush and that's a plus or minus. The green is what it's gonna use as a reference. So if you don't want it to use something like the sky up here, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to get rid of that look that bright spot up there. So I'd wanna subtract that out. If I wanna add something to it, then I can put the brush into plus mode and brush around and add. Let's see what happens if we add a little bit more at the bottom there. 
and subtract some there. All right, so we're, we're on our way. Let's click OK and let's take a look at it. Also, something that we'd want to take a look at is keeping the lights on and bills paid in my office. And to do that, you can consider my Photoshop how-to course. Uh, this is a course, it's, it's meant for somebody that's a little bit past the beginner phase. Okay, so you're in that late beginner, early intermediate phase, and you're looking just to learn how to do things in Photoshop. So it's not gonna teach you Photoshop from the ground up. I'll assume you know layers and some of the basics. And it, you, you just approach it from, how do I do this? And, and it's a course full of a ton of videos on how to do just that. It's the most popular how-tos, and it's a great cohesive way to keep yourself from scouring the internet finding all of these different fragmented ways to do things. Instead of doing that, you can go to the how-to course and you can find specifically the most popular how-tos in Photoshop in one cohesive way, easy to watch course. Uh, everything's broken up into small little chunks. I think you'll really enjoy it. So it's on sale. Again, find out more over on the website. Let's get back to the tutorial. So now as we zoom in, you're gonna see that the texture between the two is a lot closer, right? I've, I've already crossed the boundary where it happened. I can see a faint area where, where it would be. It would be right about there. But overall, that texture and that, that the difference in the pattern is mostly gone, okay? So even as we pixel peep and zoom in, I can, I can see a tiny little area right here, but you really, really gotta look for that. And this would pass uh, to, to nine out of 10 people, this would pass just fine. The, the one out of 10 person would be the picky photographer, which hopefully none of us are actually trying to, to please. So now what I said before is I, I would kind of go about this in smaller pieces. So we go in here and let's just grab that much. Edit content aware fill. And content aware fill actually will allow you to go in here and you can click apply and then you can go and reselect an area and you can stay in the window if you wanted to and you can continue going on without exiting each time. So you can work with content aware fill that way. I think it did actually a pretty good job there. So let's just click okay, let's take a look at it. Deselect, zoom in. All right, and again, you can't really see the difference that we saw with generative fill. I've already crossed, I've already crossed over from what we had and what we started with to the new area here. And to me, again, they're close enough that nobody's really gonna be able to see this. Now at this point, you can start to call in some other tools where we can go maybe over here to the remove tool. And since it's such a small area, I could, I could possibly try to, leave, I'm gonna just leave it on auto. This is such a small area and it might use generative fill, it might not, I don't know and I don't really care but I can always zoom in and look at it as it's done here. And I think the longer it takes, it's usually the, the sign that it used generative fill there. But we can zoom in and you can see it. I can see a little bit. That's the area that I fixed there. I can see a little bit of a seam. I can see a little bit of texture difference. So I'll undo. And then what I'll try is go back to that remove tool. And then what I'll try here is just turn generative AI off and see what it does. All right, and that could do the trick as well. So we zoom in here and we get much more texture. Once we turn generative AI off, it's gonna match the texture a little bit more because it's a little bit higher resolution. And remember that generative AI is usually lower resolution. And then I'm not gonna go through each one, but between the healing brush, between the clone stamp tool, if you see little seams, if you see things in there, you can go in there and, and work those out pretty easily with some of those other tools without resorting to a generative fill type of a tool, which could cause issues just for, for certain photos based on what you need for that photo there. So it's a, it's a tool that I still think it's, it's an older tool. I still think it's 100% applicable for what we need today. Also, uh, if you're interested in, in content aware fill, there's two different ways to use it. There's a simple way and there's a more advanced way. And I did a video a while back, but it's actually still exactly the way that we would use it today. So if you're looking for something to go to next, that would be a great place.